Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Maya Stiller. I am an associate professor at the University of Kansas where I teach Korean art and visual culture. And in today's video, I will discuss a few facts about K-pop that will perhaps help you understand why this global phenomenon has been so successful in Europe and in the United States for the last like 10 or 15 years. Have you heard of the name BTS? I'm sure many of you have. BTS is a South Korean seven-member boy band that debuted in 2013 on the label Big Hit Entertainment. The acronym stands for Bangtan Sonyeondan, which is translated as Bulletproof Boy Scouts or Beyond the Scene. In the past few years, BTS has enjoyed huge success in the US. In September 2020, Dynamite became the band's first number one single in the United States, making BTS the first South Korean act to top the Billboard charts. And since then, since September 2020 um, to July 2021, BTS had several number one hits, such as Permission to Dance and Butter. The success of BTS exemplifies how K-pop bands are overtaking the Western music market, showing a reversal of the long-established cultural flow from the West to the rest of the world. So you might be wondering, why is BTS so successful? And um, what's the secret of their success? The first thing you will learn in this lecture is how to define K-pop. Then we will look at what differentiates K-pop from American popular music and we will examine um, examples of intertextuality, which is a significant feature of K-pop videos that make them so entertaining to watch. And finally, we will discuss um, in how far K-pop stars have to fulfill aspirational social role models in a contemporary Korean society. And I hope that learning about these four aspects of K-pop will give you a deeper cultural understanding of what K-pop is and why it is so popular right now. First of all, K-pop is more than just a genre. It is a method of training, producing, advertising and performing currently popular music in Korea. K-pop performers are referred to as idols who receive extensive training in dancing, singing, and they also learn many foreign languages, at least English, sometimes also Chinese and Japanese. Languages of the lyrics are often mixed depending on the target audience, so oftentimes English is combined with Korean and uh, Japanese or Chinese. The most recent development is that singers only use English. For example, the most recent BTS songs were sung entirely in English to appeal to a North, Korean, North American audience. The fact that K-pop has been a relatively new phenomenon in the United States does not mean that it hasn't existed for a long time. In fact, K-pop has been around for almost three decades. Sotteji and the Boys, who debuted in 1992, are one of the earliest K-pop bands. The picture in the lower right corner of the slide shows singer and rapper Sotteji with his friends Yang Hyun Sok and Lee Jun Ho. Come Back Home, which was released in 1995, was one of their biggest hits. Let's listen in for a couple of seconds.
<laughs> now, um, believe it or not, Ha Te Ji and the boys were not only famous for their singing and dancing, but they were also huge fashion icons back in the early 1990s, uh, including overalls and weird looking hats. <laughs> so, um, and after Ha Te Ji and the boys separated in 1996, Yang Hyun Suk in fact became a very successful music producer who founded YG Entertainment, which has produced acts such as 21 and Big Bang. And Young is um, depicted here in this photograph on the left, wearing um, an overall. Now, listening to Fateji and the Boys, um, you may have noticed that, you know, it sounds somewhat familiar to Western hip hop or Western pop music, right? And that has led some people to say that K-pop is merely a clone of Western music and a commercial operation. It is true, K-pop is a capitalist mode of production, but with K-pop, listeners get something that they can't get anywhere else, and I will describe what that is in the next slides. K-pop videos like Red Velvet's Psycho, Benzino's January or Psy's Gangnam style are aesthetically appealing, focusing on performance and group dancing that listeners can appreciate regardless of their cultural or linguistic background. The large budget for production, videography, sets and styling results in an extremely high quality end product. This emphasis on the visual qualities is likely one of the reasons for K-pop's global success, since it fits with today's Instagram-centric culture. And what many fans like about K-pop is that it's a music style that's presented in a more family-friendly or clean manner. It's a cleaner version of what we would generally see and hear in American pop music, and it is presented in a very attractive package. In K-pop, there's little nudity or profanity, which also applies to K-drama, by the way. This contrasts sharply with the imagery and the lyrics of American popular music and TV shows, which, as you all know, feature numerous scenes of violence and sex and nudity, etc. K-pop is a genre that encompasses several different music styles. Electronic dance music, EDM, uh, reggae, R&B, rock, hip-hop um, are just a few of the music genres that can be found even within just one song. To give you an example, I will play a portion of the song I Got a Boy by Girl Generation. Now listen to um, this excerpt and try to identify the different music styles in the song, including hip-hop, um, electronic dance music, pop, and rock. Okay? Alright, ready? Here we go. Okay, um, now that we have established that K-pop is centered on um, dance and visuals and encompasses a variety of genres, 
what other aspects of K-pop are not American? K-pop idols unavoidably represent South Korea. So K-pop idols um, do not just represent their music, but they represent a culture that is foreign to us. They represent a foreign place and a foreign culture. And we will talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. K-pop idols have a highly dedicated fan base. BTS, for example, has a huge fan base known as ARMY, which stands for Adorable Representation MC for Youth. And members of this ARMY maintain a Twitter account, BTS on Billboard, devoted to helping BTS fly on the Billboard charts. So whenever BTS releases new music, the ARMY focuses on encouraging fans to stream and buy music, um, this particular music, and they are extremely successful with the strategy. In fact, the BTS ARMY can be credited at least partially for BTS's massive global success. Now, B um, BTS fans and K-pop fans are drawn to stunning visuals, catchy beats and group dances, as well as style and fashion. Fans can see glimpses of perfection that inspire them to imagine a better and more beautiful fantasy world. This imagination, when combined with cultural distance from Korea, can lead to exotization. However, many fans are aware of this danger and seek deeper knowledge of Korea. On the other hand, during times of the pandemic, for example, K-pop became even more popular and one of the reasons could be that watching a K-pop video you know, can be soothing um, and can help oneself to you know, temporarily escape from harsh reality. In-house production is a, another major reason why K-pop idols and their music videos look so perfect. Suman Lee, or Lee Suman, so Lee is his last name, Suman is his first name, okay? So Mr. Lee, um, the founder of SM Entertainment, the largest record label in South Korea, is considered the pioneer of in-house production. Lee has produced bands such as H.O.T., BOA, Super Junior, Girl Generation, and EXO. So entertainment companies such as SM Entertainment, they would headhunt for visual faces that is extremely good looking teenagers, and then they would train them for four to five years under strict surveillance and disciplinary control. Um, the trainees, for example, are not allowed to date anyone and female singers must adhere to an 800 calorie diet. The competition among trainees is fierce. Only about one in 80 makes it to a debut, and it is this fierce competition that contributes to the high standards in K-pop. YouTube was and is a major, major factor in the popularization of K-pop. Korean entertainment companies use YouTube as their primary platform for releasing new singles uh, of their bands, which has made these videos more accessible to a global audience. The fan base's support propels the streaming of these newly received singles to dizzying heights. For example, in the week following the release of the BTS song Butter, the song re received 289 million streams. Many South Korean entertainment companies also launched their own YouTube channels with behind-the-scenes footage and messages from the idols to their fans. As a result, YouTube has become a platform for K-pop groups and their fans, and additionally live broadcasts of K-pop music shows are also available on YouTube. Keep in mind, however, that there are different levels of success in K-pop. There are A-level groups that are highly successful, and this list on the right-hand side of the slide, written in Korean, shows the top 50 A-level groups that are currently active, led by BTS and Blackpink. And if you like, you can um, look at the English version of this list um, by um, checking out this uh, website on the lower right here. So these K-pop groups are the ones whose MVs we see on YouTube. But most bands are B-level groups which means they make their debut and never ever have 
much success after that, and so they never make it to the second promotion. Now back to the K-pop MVs. Intertextuality is a distinct feature of K-pop music videos. The set, the group dance, the fashion, the lyrics, the, these can all quote or make specific references to other things. For example, the lyrics of a song can make references to other songs of the same band or other K-pop bands, or the video may be set in traditional Korean architecture they were making reference to Korean traditional culture. The song could also include the sounds of traditional Korean instruments, or artists could wear a specific outfit that makes a reference to a popular Korean TV actor or TV drama. And K-pop songs also contain many non-Korean references from North America, for example, or Europe, um, for instance, fairy tales, children's stories, blockbuster videos, and they even refer to Japanese manga. It's like a treasure hunt for fans or a puzzle to be solved, creating a rich experience for the viewer. Whether musically or visually, many K-pop videos have an Alice in Wonderland theme. For example, IU's song 23, released in 2015, in which IU follows an animated um, white cute little rabbit. The Alice in Wonderland story was translated into Korean in the mid 20th century, and it's therefore you know, very well known in contemporary South Korea, and it is well known all over the world. This type of intertextual link to a familiar story can provide a sense of grounding and familiarity, welcoming the international viewer into the fantasy world of K-pop. In the music video 100 that was released just in 2020, K-pop idol Taehyung from Super M was styled as Todoroki Shoto. When comparing this manga figure to Taehyung's pre-release uh, album pre-release photograph, one can see that they have a similar um, hairstyle and a similar outfit. So incorporate, incorporating visual elements from My Hero Academia, an iconic Japanese manga super series written and illustrated by Kohei Horikoshi, was apparently a strategic move by the K-pop video producers to draw attention to their album release. K-pop music videos also incorporate visual oral and textual references to Korean cultural traditions. In their MV of Kaja, band members of Wanas perform in front of a wall decorated with beautiful patterns of Tanchong, the coloring on wooden buildings and traditional Korean architecture. And in the MV of Benzino's song January, the singer performs inside what appears to be a traditional royal reception hall. In pre-modern Korea, the king would have given audiences in such a hall, sitting in front of a painting depicting the sun, the moon, and the five peaks, which represented the universe under the, under the king's authority. Everyone in South Korea is familiar with this iconic painting. And so Benzino in this video is, is playing with this um, iconic picture, and he's playing with basically replacing the king in this um, palace hall um, and being kind of the main character in this hall. Now let's listen to the first minute of one other song, Kaja, which is the Korean word for let's go or lit. And listen carefully. What traditional Korean elements do you notice in the music? And also look at this snapshot from um, the video that you can, of course, watch in its full length on YouTube um, that has traditional architecture in the background. And then the singers are also wearing these um, hanbok-ish <laughs> clothes. So let's listen to the beginning of the song. Gotcha. Oh, 
Okay. Now, do you remember what you heard at the beginning of the song? So at the beginning of the song, um, we could immediately hear the synthesized versions of two traditional Korean instruments, the Qing, which is a traditional Korean gong, and the Bipa, which is a string instrument often referred to as the Korean lute. It has a teardrop-shaped body and a short neck with wing with a strings. I'm sure you also noticed a few elements in the lyrics, if you're familiar with a little bit of Korean, and because those lyrics contain intertextuality as well. So in the beginning, the singer says, 오늘 날이 좋구나, which means today's moon is beautiful. And that is a phrase that can be frequently found in traditional Korean folk songs. And there are also um, non-lexical syllables, such as ol shigu, which means great, or hooray. And um, towards the end of what I played to you was nililia, which is the refrain in a very well-known traditional Korean folk song. As a result, while K-pop songs sound modern, the producers of, for instance, this song connected the song to the visual and oral elements of Korean traditional culture, thereby localizing and simultaneously exotifying the sound for foreign eyes and ears. Now, how do K-pop stars make money? They actually make very little money as members of a band, which is why K-pop stars will sooner or later try to get endorsement deals from the advertising industry or they play at special events, or they sell celebrity merchandise or star in TV or Netflix series. Susie Bae is a former K-pop idol who successfully transitioned from K-pop singer to actress and model. She made her debut with Miss A in 2020, but in the more than 10 years since then, she has appeared in several television series and signed several dozen endorsement deals. This photograph shows her in an advertisement for a well-known Korean brand of glasses. Since Korean K-pop stars represent a non-Western version of celebrity, um, they are you know, very different types of stars than the ones that you might be familiar with in the US because discipline is the most important factor for success. Physical perfection, including flawless skin and body shape, is a must. And artists must adhere to South Korean societal expectations, which include abstaining from alcohol, smoking, drugs, dating, um, not leading in a very eccentric lifestyle, and having a very strong sense of patriotism is extremely important. Male K-pop singers are expected to serve in the military, which is mandatory for all Korean, South Korean men. If K-pop stars try to avoid military service, they are ostracized and in the worst case scenario, they are forced to abandon their careers. The photos in this slide show K-pop singers who completed this 18 month military service. At the top you see a CM Blues singer, Kang Min Hyuk, and at the bottom is Chung Ji Hoon, known under his stage name Rain, um, this picture was taken when he was finishing his military service. And another aspect of K pop is that K pop stars are expected to be approachable. So, in contrast to American pop music stars, K pop icons, uh, K pop idols, or icons, are expected to interact with fans on a regular basis you know, via Twitter, via Facebook, um, via YouTube and they're expected to be always grateful and humble and take on public roles as big si sister, uh, smaller little sister, or uh, big brother. 
and they are expected to fulfill certain certain social role models. Um, for example, another distinction um, that we can find between K-pop and the American pop, you know, not a generic American pop music singer, is that K-pop stars have certain responsibilities as South Korean citizens, since they live in this highly nationalistic post-colonial society of South Korea. K-pop is a deliberate soft power tool used by the South Korean government. For example, in July 2021, the South Korean president Moon Jae-in named BTS special as special envoys for public diplomacy. So idols are expected to act as cultural ambassadors of South Korea. They are also expected to promote tourism and represent Korea at diplomatic events. And nationalism also demands that they serve as spokespeople for Korean companies. BTS, for example, has been promoting Samsung's generation of foldable phones. K-pop stars are frequently featured on tourism flyers and posters. On this slide, you can see a few examples of posters promoting visits to Seoul. The poster on the right depicts Korean-American singer Crystal walking through an alley in Seoul's famous Bukchon Hanok village, which is in the um, northwestern part of the city. And the two posters on the left depict K-pop groups Itzy and BTS in front of Seoul landmarks like uh, Seoul Tower or Namdaemun, the Namdaemun Gate. So the most important takeaways from this lecture are that K-pop is not just a genre, but a method of training, producing, promoting, and performing popular music in South Korea. And we also learned that K-pop covers a wide range of musical genres, and that when we look at the music videos, they have studying, stunning and visuals, um, they're known for their fashion, their highly, highly synchronized group dances and body performance. That's really dominating K-pop music videos. And when it comes to fans, well, K-pop fans, K-pop bands can rely on a highly dedicated fan base with whom they frequently interact on social media. Korean and non-Korean cultural references abound in K-pop music videos. And this intertextuality is a significant feature of K-pop that provides familiarity and rewards dedicated fans. In addition, unlike American pop singers, K-pop idols are expected to act as aspirational social role models and cultural ambassadors for their country. A huge benefit of K-pop is the real impact it has had on the field of Korean studies and Korean language courses all over the world. My colleagues and I have actually noticed that enrollments are rapidly increasing. And, as, and we can also see a growing number of students who are deeply engaging with Korean culture and history, which will most likely lead to a more complex understanding of Korea in the West in the long run. So this concludes my lecture. Um, I hope it was fun and interesting. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen. And if you would like to delve deeper into the topic, here is my bibliography. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact me, um, email me at mstiller at kuedu. Thank you so much and have a good day.